First story. OP caught her racist elementary school bully giving a speech on racial pride in high school. So she gave a speech on her racism and bullying, causing her to get disowned, dumped by her fiancé, lose her job, and be shunned by her equal rights group. So the title is self-explanatory. But you will be surprised. When I F28 was in elementary school, I had a bully. I'll call her Aya because it's the only nice thing I will ever do for her. It all started in the first grade. She was the instant popular girl because she talked about her time in Ghana. She was born and raised there up until she was four years old, when her parents immigrated to America. And I thought that was so cool because the only immigrants I have ever known were from Mexico. I'm also Mexican. Which is something you need to remember because we lived in Texas. I asked her what life was like in Africa. She looked at me and said it in a very smug voice. A lot better than Mexico. I thought that was weird. But I let it go because we were kids at the time and I think she just wanted to be cool or something. As the year went on, she always made off-handed comments about me being Mexican, and they were always directed towards me. It wasn't until the second grade that we were just learning this brand new word that we had never heard of before, racism. Seven-year-old me at the time vaguely understood it, because my mom taught me the words that were derogatory towards us and wanted me to be aware of them. Anyway, we were watching a cartoon about Martin Luther King Jr., and we were at a scene where the protesters were being unjustly arrested. I thought it was cruel and didn't think it was fair. Aya, though, looked at me and shouted. A beaner like you would never understand. For those who don't know, the word beaner is a slur against Latin people. Sure, it's not as disgusting as the N-word, but it's a disgusting word to people like me. And I've been called that a lot of times, even back then. I was horrified to be called that in the middle of class, and I looked at my teacher, who just shrugged her shoulders and went back to the show. I couldn't believe it. We're learning about the civil rights movement and I was called a racial slur in front of everyone. I tried asking my teacher, why didn't she say anything, because what a called me was a bad word towards me and my ethnicity. All she did was say, it's just a word, just a board sites and sticks and stones. I ran home in tears, and told my mom everything. She was upset at first, but at the time she told me that Aya probably didn't know that that word was a bad word towards Latin people, and maybe she'll figure it out when she's older or say sorry the next day. How wrong my mother was. For the next four years, Ayo would throw racial slurs at me, calling me a beaner who eats nothing but beans or a wet back because I must have crossed the Rio Grande River. I begged her every single time to stop, and I went to my teachers, pleading with them for help, but they never did anything. It wasn't just the racial slurs she threw at me. She would insult me for the way I looked, the way my hair was, and why I was bigger compared to the other girls who were slim she wasn't a model herself either. Things got worse in the fourth grade. I was going through a rough time because my mom was dating a man who drank beer as if prohibition had ended. He also smoked heavily, and the smell would end up on my clothes, which added fuel for Aya's fire. When D.A.R.E. was a big thing back in the day, A. would always use me as an example about the dangers of smoking. She pointed out how the smell was so bad that she constantly plugged her nose every time she walked by me. It led to rumors of me, never taking a bath that followed me up until the end of sixth grade. At this time, my mom was starting to realize that Aya was not stopping, and she tried contacting the school. But all she would get was that it was just a disagreement between two classmates. She wrote notes for me to give to my teachers, but nothing would happen. And in the fifth grade, things really took a toll. My grandfather passed away, and his death hurt me so much that even to this day, I still feel the raw pain of his passing. Word got out to my school, and Aya walked up to me, saying how sorry she was that my grandfather was gone. I naively thought that maybe she would just stop being a bully and say sorry for saying racist things towards me. Nope. It's sad that he died to get away from you. I would too if I realized my granddaughter was so ugly. I broke into tears while she and a few of her friends laughed. And as always, none of my teachers did anything to stop her. I told my mom, who managed to finally get a hold of my teacher, and demanded that she do something about it or else she was going to go up there and make her stop. So for the first time in the whole year, my teacher walked up to Aya and told her to stop being so mean to me. I took a look at her and burst into tears, crying that she was being so mean. It's because I'm black, isn't it? Immediately, my stupid teacher backed off. Aya would go on to use that phrase every day, single. At some point, one of our teachers even attempted to do something. Now you're probably wondering how she ruined my life. Well, I'm getting to it. Things slowly quieted down when I was in sixth grade, but I was plotting something. I used to draw anime a lot. I wasn't any good, but I practiced every single day, 
and slowly my skills were improving. I was drawing the main cast of Sailor Moon during free time, and it was really a decent first attempt. For once, there were no stray pencil marks, and I didn't have to erase as much. I left to go to the bathroom, and when I came back, my drawing was ruined. It had pen marks everywhere, with the words beaner and wet back in permanent marker all over it. I was devastated and broke down. I worked so hard on that drawing, and it was vandalized with hate. I looked over to a group of desks where Aya was sitting, and I saw her laughing. She and a couple of her girlfriends were saying how funny it was. I was crying over a stupid picture, and I saw that she had that stupid permanent marker on her desk. I marched up to her and yelled at her. I demand to know what it is about me that she hates so much, and why she is acting like a racist towards me when I did nothing to her. I was crying and screaming, and my teacher told both of us to go to the office. I thought we were finally going to solve the issue, but as always, I was wrong. My principal looked at the both of us and said that I should apologize to Aya. Me, what? P, apologize to her for yelling at her. Just because you're upset overdrawing doesn't mean you have to yell at a classmate for it. Me. But she ruined my drawing. She wrote slurs all over it. I should point out that she even had permanent marker stains on her hands. Me. Why aren't you telling her that you don't tolerate racism in this school? Why are you always taking her side? I'm not taking side, young lady. But those are just words. Sticks and stones. I honestly didn't know what to feel at that moment. I realized that Ayo was getting away with her racism, and there was nothing I could do about it. I still refused to apologize and the principal called my mom, who demanded that the principal do something about Aya, but nothing happened as always. After that incident, Aya was emboldened at the fact that she could get away with the bullying, which made my life hell. She destroyed me. It was to the point where I could no longer draw. Even to this day, if I even tried to draw a character I liked, I would break into tears and just stop. My mom tried everything. She pleaded, she demanded, and she threatened, but my school just brushed it off as an overprotective single mom who just didn't like seeing her overly sensitive child hurt. In my mom's perspective, from what she told me, she watched as her happy-go-lucky little girl slowly morphed into a sad and combative teenager. I developed a hatred for my own ethnicity, and I cried. I wished I was white because I hated being called those words, and I hated the way my face looked because I could see my Native American features. That's right, I'm indigenous too. She made me hate myself. It was only after elementary school did the bullying finally stop because she went to a different junior high school. But just because I was able to get away from her didn't mean that the effects of her bullying stopped. I had to go to therapy to get the terrible things she said to me out of my head and slowly regain myself as a person. My family, who knew of the bullying, gathered around and gave me unconditional love and support, all the while telling me stories of our ancestors who started our family and how they fled Spain during the Texas Revolution. I even went to the tribe I was descended from to help gain a better understanding of my indigenous roots and they helped me immensely as well. Yeah, Aya and I ended up going to the same high school, but I avoided her like the plague because I wanted nothing to do with her or her bullshit. Aya was a model student, and during Black History Month, we used to have an assembly where we talked about the great black figures in history. She would always go on the podium and talk about how proud she was of her race and that we should embrace everyone of different races, religions, and all that good stuff. It took all of my willpower and constant reminding of myself that what happened in elementary school was in the past to not laugh and roll my eyes. I just thought she was a piece of work. Fast forward to 2021. I was packing up my room because I was getting ready to move some of my stuff to my new house with my then fiancé, now husband, while we were planning our wedding. I was reading a book on my phone when I got a notification from someone I hadn't seen since high school. It was Aya. I'm an adult now, so instead of feeling the terrible anxiety, I would always feel whenever I would get a note from her. I just looked at it, annoyed, wondered what the hell she wanted, and opened it. Apparently, she was hosting our elementary school reunion because the old building was being torn down in place of a new one. She was inviting everyone who went to school there so we could say goodbye to the old girl. Honestly, I didn't want to go because that school has done nothing but bring me grief and anger. Just driving by it over the years would make my heart pound uncomfortably. I wanted to decline, but I thought to myself, that stupid school will be destroyed. Why not spit on it or something? And then something sparked in my head. This could be my last chance to expose Aya for who she really is. Aya is not a good racist who takes joy in other people's misery. And it wasn't just me she threw racial slurs at. She was like that to everyone. From the girl who was from Delhi to a Chinese student who ended up transferring to a different school because he couldn't take it anymore. 
the planning. Having dinner with my mom, I asked her if she remembered the girl who used to bully me. She gripped her fork and said that she did remember how much she hated that little bee. I asked her if she remembered going to the school many times to complain about her, and she said yes, and that she had written down everything that was said. And knowing my mom, she never threw anything away because it was an important document. I decided to look into her old files, and I found them. It was not only the notes mom took, but it was also full of the hateful messages Ea wrote to me. Even my Sailor Moon drawing, which had those terrible racial slurs on it. The terrible feelings of self-hatred and sorrow came back in full force. I was close to tears seeing that drawing and those notes. I really wanted to know why she had so much hate in her heart. After calming myself down, I went to work. I printed copies of the notes along with a note from my principal that said, It seems that Aya called just aboard sits in nasty words based on her ethnicity. It was even signed by that principal, which proved two things. A was a racist, and the school knew but refused to do anything. The revenge. The little party was basically a barbecue on the school playground. I showed up in casual clothing and saw my old classmates for the first time in years. To say the least, I was the only one who still looked fresh-faced and was not worn down by parenthood. I did catch up to a few of them. Most of them were actually Aya's victims, but unlike me, they ignored her when she would bully them. Looking around, I actually saw some known members of our local equal rights group. I assumed she invited them because Aya has made a name for herself over the years since graduation. It almost made me feel sorry for what I was going to do. And when I mean almost, I mean never. The little barbecue went by smoothly, and Ayo was talking about the beautiful memories she had at our old school, and that she was so thankful that they welcomed her with open arms because she was an immigrant from a faraway country, and was worried about not being able to belong. I remembered how proud she was when she first walked into our class no fear at all. After her passionate farewell speech, everyone in our class took turns saying their own farewells. They half arsed their speeches, and some just said that the school was awesome. When it was my turn, I looked around and saw everyone staring at me. Aya is standing there with a confident smile on her face, as if she thought that I was so beaten down that I would just say whatever with the school, and that's it. But nope. Over the years since graduation, I sort of developed an I don't give a F attitude. I say what I say, and I will do a microphone drop if I have to. I talked about how I was so nervous about going to school, because it was something new and I knew that it would lead me down a path of adulthood. I talked about how this damn school had brought nothing but nightmares, horrible teachers, and a terrible student who bullied me so much that my poor mother had to spend thousands of dollars of her life savings just to give me therapy because I could not function well. I then looked at Aya and said that she was a prime example of the American dream. An immigrant who worked tirelessly to make it in this complicated country. I then said it in the same smug tone of voice she had 20 years ago. I am so glad you grew out of your racism. And with that, I stood up and left. And remember what I said about those notes my mom kept? Well, I sent them to that local group anonymously, and told them that their star volunteer was not who she was. I just thought that would be the end of it. But I did not know of the absolute SHT storm I caused. Aya's reputation was destroyed. When the leader of the group saw the notes, he was livid. He immediately told her that she was no longer welcomed, and said that she was a terrible example for the people they were helping. Her fiancé dumped her. She lost her job, and as it turns out, her parents never knew of the bullying. I guess my principal decided that it wasn't worth calling them years ago. They were angry with her, and demanded to know where she got this attitude, because, as I found out, her father works in a business that required them to travel to and from Ghana, and he worked with many interesting people. On top of that, my former principal apparently lost a special award she got for her contributions to our school district, when the superintendent happened to get an envelope containing my mother's notes and he was just as livid. I got an apology from the school district, along with other victims of Aya. They accepted that just to get it over with. But I politely refused, saying that it was too little, too late. I did get comments from my former classmates, saying that I should have just let it all go. But here's the thing. I did get over it. I wanted nothing more than to just close that chapter in my life and move on. But seeing her name in that email really triggered something in me, and knowing that she was running around saying things that were opposite of what she really believed. I wanted her to feel broken the same way as I felt. My mom was neutral about it. I don't resent her because she did everything she possibly could to stop the bullying. I'm thankful for that because in some stories I've seen on Reddit about people being bullied, their parents do absolutely nothing. I'm in a much better place now. I moved out of state after I got married, and I'm happy. Aya has attempted to contact me, 
demanding I apologize for ruining her life. But I just ignored her and blocked her. I wish I knew why she had so much hatred. I was never rude to her. I thought it was cool that she was from Africa. I love their culture. And I thought it was awesome that she was a part of it. I also wish I could draw again because it was my only escape from a troubled life. Aside from the bullying, I'm just glad I was able to regain love for who I am as a person of Mexican descent and indigenous background. Because she really made me feel like I was worthless for it. That's the story of how I ruined the life of my racist bully. The plot twist was that she was black, and I was Mexican. Sure, the words she said were probably just words. But those words were very derogatory to me, and many people of my ethnicity. And it's just as degrading as being called an N-word by a black person. And it also shows that even black people can be the worst racists. I'm not saying that all black people are racist because I've met amazing black people in my lifetime who truly believe in racial equality. I wanted to keep this to myself. But after seeing the terrible attacks on Asian Americans since the stupid pandemic happened, I noticed that it was sparking a big debate on who should be charged with hate crimes. We're still not there yet when it comes to truly being equal regardless of race, gender, religion, and orientation. But little by little, we are becoming a little bit better. Not much, but a little bit. Sorry for the long post. I just want to get this off my chest. And please don't make the comments into a debate. I'm really not trying to start anything. I just wanted to tell you how I finally got my revenge. Edit. Okay, I really meant it when I said, I wasn't trying to start anything when I posted this. But because some people are doubting this, which I'm not surprised by, let me clarify a couple of things for you. Why did I still have those notes? Because the bullying happened before social media became a big thing. It was in the early 2000s. She saved those notes because I think she was planning on going to the district. But by the time she was able to even consider it, elementary school had ended and Aya went to a different junior high. Where did she learn those words? When she first called me Beaner, she noticed my reaction. Bullies will tell you anything just to get a reaction out of you. The stronger the reaction, the better. I even told her not to call me that word because it was a slur. But that didn't stop her. And why did it cause that district to apologize? Because it wouldn't be the first time they were accused of covering up bullying based on race. They were already going through a lawsuit over a recent incident similar to mine. And they just wanted to avoid any legal repercussions. But as I said, I don't care about that school anymore. It can go to hell for all I care. Second story. OP snooped into his girlfriend's PC and found that she was keeping spreadsheets rating her SX life and got devastated seeing the rating she gave him. Now, he's curious to check her ratings for her previous relationships. My girlfriend and I have been together for about a year and a half. She is amazing, intelligent, and caring. We don't live together, but we're considering moving in together in January, when her lease is up. We pretty much spend all of our nights together, though. Anyway. I spent the night at her place last night and ended up using her computer for work. This morning, I needed to email the document I'd been working on last night to myself at work. I couldn't remember where I'd saved it, so I just searched the computer for any files with my name. Two pop up. One is the document I was working on before, and the other is an Excel spreadsheet titled SX and Relationships. So, I opened it. From what I could tell, she has been keeping this spreadsheet since her first relationship nine years. She has a tab for each SX partner or relationship, where she notes the dates of SX, rates the SX, notes what SX acts, and rates the relationship, not entirely sure what that means either. It was open on my tab, since I'm the most recent, so I read all of her SX relationship ratings, and they start out pretty high, I don't know the scale, but have been getting lower over the past two months. It basically took all of my willpower, but I didn't look at the other guy's tabs. Thinking about seeing the other guy's SX acts column, and the ratings just makes me sick to my stomach. So I just closed the spreadsheet, emailed myself my work document, and went to work. I've just been stewing since then, though, and becoming more and more insecure about the SX ratings. I'm so tempted to read the other guy's ratings, but I know that would be wrong, as well as self-torture. I already feel kind of shy about reading even my tab, but at the same time, I'm kind of offended by the fact that she rates our SX life and relationship, like it's just a performance evaluation at work or something. I don't know. Obviously something is wrong with our actual lives, so I need to talk to her about that. But there haven't been any signs of that from my perspective. So she's probably going to realize I saw the spreadsheet if I randomly bring it up. So what do I do? Do I tell her what I saw? Am I overreacting by being a little angry about her rating me and our relationship? Also, isn't keeping track of your SX life to this extent kind of odd? I haven't seen her since I found the spreadsheet. She had already left for work when I saw it. 
TLDR, GF rates, all her relationships and SX partners. My SX ratings are getting lower. I don't know how to approach this with my girlfriend, and I'm a little offended by even the concept of rating our relationship. I also keep thinking about the previous guy's ratings and getting insecure. Edit. The document I emailed myself was my work file. Not her spreadsheet. I worded it weird. Relevant comment. Remember Kumvali. What? All the times you have SX? I mean, I've certainly made lists of past experiences when looking for patterns. Am I dating the same kind of arsehole again, but not with a current relationship? That's pretty weird. Is she a generally mathematical sort of person? Good for you for not looking at the other tabs. Don't? No good will come of it. When was the last time the two of you sat down and had a discussion about how things were going? Do you do that with any regularity? OP. Yeah, as far as I can tell, every time we've had SX, she is a very mathematical person. She has a hard time opening up with emotions sometimes. But usually if I initiate a conversation about how she's feeling about something, she opens up. The last time we had a serious discussion was when we talked about moving in together. That was maybe a month or so ago. Definitely within the time frame of when the SX ratings were already dropping. So I don't know what's up. Why would you want to move in with someone when you feel your sexual life is not only poor but getting worse? That makes no sense to me. Edit. I meant poor in relation to how she felt at the beginning of our relationship. Since the ratings were getting lower for something like a month before our conversation about moving in together. Spreadsheets for life. Whoops. You replied at the exact second, I decided to put this on a throwaway instead, in case my boyfriend finds my username. I'll just quote my old reply below, I guess, just in case. Anyway, I think the ratings are a bit cold too, but I can see how they might not feel cold to her. After all, she doesn't expect anyone else to read them, so to her, they're just a kind of shorthand for all the complex thoughts she has about them, but doesn't feel like writing them down. My previous reply. For a second, I was scared my boyfriend had found my spreadsheet. Except I don't do the ratings. That just seems cold. Also, it is difficult to quantify or maintain consistent standards. I do keep a color-coded spreadsheet of everyone I have ever had SX with, the dates of when we had SX, and sometimes notes on the experience, such as any factors that might have led to it being especially good one time. I also keep spreadsheets of everything I eat on days when I take my Adderall and when in the day I eat it how many hours per day I program color-coded by project, and how long it takes me to complete any one chunk of my project, how many social interactions I have per day, and who I have them with with an automated script to send emails out to schedule meals if I've gone too long without seeing any one of a specific list of close friends, how many ml of water I drink over the course of the day and when I drink it. I am just the kind of personality that likes data, if that makes any sense. I also effing love doing my taxes. It's the same kind of impulse that drives some people to journal every day. I just find it inefficient to write things down in sentences most of the time. Maybe your girlfriend is the same way. And the fact that she's keeping the Excel spreadsheet doesn't mean anything other than that she's perhaps a bit odd and thinks it's funny or interesting. It doesn't seem like she is sharing the spreadsheet with anyone, which would be a real issue. What would you do if, instead of a spreadsheet, a Microsoft Word document containing her diary popped up with diary entries about her thoughts on your sexual life and relationship trajectory. Would you still feel offended that she is journaling her thoughts and feelings in a private place? Personally, I think I would respect her privacy and not read the rest of the spreadsheet. And maybe not even tell her that you saw it in the first place, she may get angry and embarrassed. I would try to have a general conversation with her about whether there is anything she wants to try in bed to make your SX life even better, etc. Update. Three days later. I thought I should update you guys. Thanks for all the advice. I decided to tell her about my snooping, despite the general consensus being that that would be foolish. My reasons for it were. 1. I felt bad about snooping. 2. I'm terrible at keeping things from people. It probably would have come out eventually, so I felt it was best to do it ASAP, and in a planned and controlled manner. 3. I still didn't feel comfortable with the ratings, and wanted to understand why she did it, and what it meant to her. I love her, so I want to understand how her brain works. 4. I wanted to address the actual issues in a straightforward manner. I know everyone was recommending I just do this organically, but we did a lot of that in the first few months of our relationship. I felt it would come off as odd if I suddenly started asking if she was okay or enjoying the stuff she's been telling me she prefers for one and half years, and she would definitely ask me why I was concerned. I didn't want to have to lie. Here's how it went. 
I didn't end up talking to her Friday night because she was busy exercise class with a friend. It ended up being a good thing because I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And like I said, I have a hard time hiding things, so she definitely would have known something was up. I just ruminated on the whole thing last Friday and finally decided I'd tell her. So last night, I told her the whole story, and she knew where it was going pretty well because she started covering her face when I said I searched for my name. When I explained that I only looked at my tap, though, she was really relieved. I apologized for even opening it in the first place, but she wasn't really upset about that. She said that she understood the compulsion once I saw the title. She felt it was different from someone who goes out of their way to purposely snoop on their so. And the fact that I told her instead of hiding it really helped. She said she was relieved I didn't look at the other tabs, because that would have been a much bigger violation of privacy, and not just her privacy, but also the guy's privacy, and definitely would have been an act of jealousy or insecurity, rather than curiosity. The whole time she was explaining this, I was just thinking, thank God, I didn't effing open those other tabs. Seriously, I am so effing happy, I did not look at those tabs. I can't stress this enough. I almost screwed up my relationship a lot. Anyway, as for the whole question of why she keeps track, and what the ratings mean, Uspercheat's for life was spot on. She just really likes keeping track of her own personal data. She has spreadsheets for her health recording her weight, how energetic she feels, allergy symptoms, etc. And even some completely silly ones like keeping track of how long her hair is. I told her I was worried since I saw the SX ratings were decreasing, and I wanted to know what I should do differently. She said the ratings were about her personal enjoyment, not my performance. Apparently, she's gained a bit of weight over the past couple months, and she felt her own self-image was keeping her from enjoying SX as much. That's why she joined a gym and decided to go to the exercise class this week. I was totally flabbergasted by this, because I honestly have not noticed the weight gain. I told her that, and she was basically like, you're sweet, but completely oblivious sometimes. I made sure to let her know that I think she's gorgeous and SXY, and has no reason to feel badly about her body. She said that's all fine and good. But this was more about her internal validation than external validation. She said this has happened before in previous relationships. And because of the spreadsheets, she was able to figure out the problem and fix it. I said I understood. But I'd really like it if she told me that she wasn't enjoying SX as much, so I could help her. She said she hadn't thought to tell me because she was already taking steps to fix it. I asked her to please just tell me anyway. It's not fun to have SX if the other person isn't having fun too. I'm actually going to start making healthier foods for the two of us, since I suspect the weight gain is probably partially my fault since I love to cook, and I'm always making comfort foods. All in all, it went way better than I could have ever expected. She doesn't think I'm a horrible SX partner, and I now know how I can help our SX lives. She was a little concerned about me finding out about her spreadsheets, though. Apparently a previous boyfriend found out, freaked out, and told her she was too cold and robotic. I said that. And now that I understand why she does it, I realize it's not that unlike a diary thank you to the people who made this comparison in the original thread. It really helped me. She was very happy to hear that. Sorry this update took so long. It was a busy weekend. And my girlfriend had some data, she needed help gathering. TLDR, I told her. She wasn't too upset about the snooping. She explained the SX ratings were more about her than about me. And we're going to work on being healthier together so her self-image can be back where it was before. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your fry.